Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 6.5 On The Road here in Albany at the Nanotech Center. I'm Daniel Newman, one of the hosts here at the 6.5, joined by my always esteemed colleague, Mr. Patrick Moorhead. Welcome. Great to be here, and I love On The Roads better than anything, but what I like even better than On The Roads are On The Roads talking about deep tech, and it doesn't get more deep into tech than nanotech. So It doesn't, and I also love talking about big topics like policy, uh, the technology changed the world. You and I like to say things like semiconductors eat the world or you can't run software on air. And this was kind of a big week in the semiconductor space with the CHIPS Act passing. And so I felt like the 6.5 had to kind of take the moment and have a conversation. And maybe we are in the perfect place to have that conversation. And it is a great time uh, to introduce our guest here, Dr. Kahari from IBM, who is VP of Hybrid Cloud at IBM Research to talk about this. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here with you. It's a real pleasure to have you here with us. As I was kind of setting this thing up, we were like, wow, we were coming to visit. We were here to learn and kind of look at this bigger picture, future of compute full stack thing, uh, thing. It's full stack that IBM is really building. I think you call it something like the golden stack That's actually. Yeah. Um, but it happened to fall on the calendar right around the same time that this multi-year saga of the CHIPS Act is coming to a conclusion. I think it's very close, very close, meaning it's really done, except I think there's one more signature left, a fairly important one. Mm -hmm. But I think we're at that point now, Pat, where we can start talking about this thing. And, and Dr. Mukesh here has some really great insights. So bringing you to the fold to join us on the 6.5, I think it times really well. Absolutely, I think the best place to start, because we have a lot of different viewers of the 6.5 at different levels of understanding of semiconductors, but uh, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. Like, why should we care about chips? Why should we care about semiconductors? And, and why is this so important? Why are so many people talking about the CHIPS Act? So Pat, as you know, semiconductor is the most foundational technology that the world runs on. We don't talk about it, uh, but it is the technology. It's the technology that uh, became, well, that was uh, invented in the U.S. Semiconductor business started in the U.S. And uh, this, you know, that essentially enabled almost exponential growth in the IT industry in particular. And then we all use IT for everything that we do, whether it's our cell phone, making a phone call, or your cars. In fact, cars became such an important topic uh, that... Uh, you know, you can't buy cars these days because cars uh, don't have chips. Uh, uh, cars use hundreds and sometimes thousands of chips inside those cars. So clearly, everything that we do and everything we use, semiconductor is the foundation. The chips are the foundation that goes inside, whether it's your dishwasher or your toaster oven or your refrigerator. So clearly, you know, chips, uh, uh, the, the pandemic really made this, uh, this uh, topic of chips uh, when and pandemic uh, created disruption in the supply chain. And then we all realized, oh, chips are so important and we need to pay attention to this. Clearly, you know, that that made it, uh, you know, uh, bring to the forefront. Now then countries, nations, US, everybody understand how important semiconductor and chip business is. I love that you said that. I think the way I've explained it, we've talked about on our show is that semiconductors had a moment throughout the last two years and the pandemic where it went from something that only kind of geeks, nerds, researchers, scientists yeah. talked about, and then suddenly became like a family dinner discussion. We can't get chips because people started to realize, well, I can't run my software. I can't go on Facebook. I don't, you can't use my iPhone. You know, we can't get enough PCs, can't do our Zoom calls. I mean, it was really something that was like an aha moment. And so as this legislation went through, I think it gained a lot of momentum. Uh, you know, we kind of talked about what it was and why, you know, semiconductors are important, but maybe sometimes I would say some companies rise immediately. And these are the companies people think about when they think about chips. And there's other companies, IBM being one, that are doing a lot of things, making a lot of contributions, but maybe don't always come first in mind when it comes to semiconductors. And I think there's an opportunity now for what you're doing, the work you're doing to rise to the top. I'm going to get to a question here, I swear. Um, <laughs> You know, with this passage, I guess I'm kind of interested. Um, what do you think IBM's role is with the CHIPS Act? What role do you see the company playing? That's, that's, uh, that's a very important question. Uh, we, IBM, are very strong supporter of CHIPS Act. Uh, we, as, as you know, we have, a, we have a very broad hybrid cloud and AI business. 
which is a business in the IT industry. We build our own systems. We want to make sure that we get supply of uh, chips for our own business. Our business needs chips. Our Z system needs most advanced chip technology. Access to chip technology is central to IBM's business. That's one part of uh, you know the reasons that we really, really care and we are really proud of the fact that you know Chipsack got uh, passed through two steps, one more step to go, <laughs> uh, which uh, we should happen very soon. So we do. Uh, yeah, we. <laughs> I was crossing my fingers, but yeah, we're good. <laughs> oh, <that's> we're good. <laughs> so we Don't we do that, Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, so we do care and we are very, very strong supporter of Chips Act. In addition to, you know, the the way IBM plays a role is that, uh, you know, IBM uh, over a period of time evolved our business model on how we get chips for our own business, right? Uh, we used to be manufacturer of chips. Uh, to, in 2015, we, you know, looking at our business, we decided we are going to double down and focus on research and development because we want to make sure that there is a technology for uh, you know technology innovation and technology that we need for our business and we will partner with companies to manufacture that chip for us and for themselves so we are very much uh, focused on the research and development part of chips act which is uh, you know which is about uh, 10 to 11 billion dollar investment that is uh, called out as a part of chips act and there is also a uh, proposal to uh, as a part is to build a national semiconductor technology center and that's a that's a great uh, uh, proposal essentially it enables uh, a democratization of uh, access to uh, research and development in the world of uh, semiconductor technology so this will in our view enable you know big companies uh, uh, small companies startups uh, universities to participate in this uh, chip uh, R&D ecosystem. So we are very excited about it. As more companies and more universities participate, it will definitely benefit all of us collectively who consume these chips for our business. Yeah, I think we've learned over the years that one company can't do it all. And really a collaboration of large companies, small companies, startups is really the way to go. That's really how uh, innovation uh, flourishes and, and we get to that next step. So a lot of these conversations we're having, uh, some of them tend to be global, right? Because they, they're connected between countries, but there's also uh, regional specific or even country specific conversations uh, that are having. H how are you looking at the difference between uh, these two? Yeah, that's, a, that's another great question. Uh, you know, the, the semiconductor industry is a global industry. Right, so we we need to acknowledge that uh, this, uh, there are companies all over the world who are contributing into this uh, this uh, broad ecosystem. Now that said, uh, because uh, semiconductor was not that cool lately, uh, we started to forget. I always about, thought it was cool. Uh, you know. <laughs> so so we started to lose our leadership uh, in in semiconductor for the U.S. and the Western world. And the supply chain and the manufacturing of, especially leading edge chip, became very imbalanced when it comes to the global, uh, you know, supply of or manufacturing of this leading edge technology. So I think uh, to us, uh, you know, the Chips Act, what it does, it it enables, uh, it kind of a uh, you know, um, a shot in the arm, where uh, it enables to reverse or try to reverse the trend. So that uh, you know, so that the uh, the U.S. and the uh, and the like-minded countries can participate uh, at the equal playing field. They can help uh, invigorate semiconductor industry. And uh, as you said, you know, this becomes a topic uh, at the dinner table. So kids get excited and they want to become part of semiconductor, uh, you know, education system and become part of creating new next semiconductor. And again, the industry that uh, U.S. created. So we're here at the Albany Nanotech Center, and IBM is part of this ASIC coalition. First of all, cool name. <laughs> uh, I think we would all agree uh, that that definitely fits. Um, 
you know, I don't know how much our audience recognizes the coalition, but obviously I feel as you've been able to explain it in some of the conversations we've been able to have offline that that partnership, that coalition is very interesting. Talk a little bit about what that is, what it's comprised of and sort of the role of the coalition as a whole with this, with the CHIPS Act and sort of the ongoing development of semiconductors. ASIC, it's a cool name. ASIC stands for American Semiconductor Innovation Coalition. Works though. It works perfect. Uh, we like acronyms. We like cool acronyms. Uh, so we, uh, together with uh, many of our partners, uh, work to create this uh, coalition. This coalition now has more than 100 uh, partners in that, which includes uh, large companies, uh, like big names that we can all recognize, many small companies, many startups, as well as a uh, lot of universities, top universities, as well as HBCUs. Uh, and national labs, other consortia. So it's a collection of this entire ecosystem of, uh, you know, contributors in the semiconductor business. And we have all come together, you know, towards, uh, especially towards the R&D part of uh, the CHIPS Act to develop what is the right R&D agenda that we can, you know, help propose as a part of creation of this National Semiconductor Technology Center. What is the right thing to do to help democratize access to this very difficult leading edge technology? Today, barrier to entry in semiconductor is very high. And that's why you don't see a lot of VCs investing in semiconductor. That's why the number of startups are not as many in semiconductor. So the idea is that how, how we can put our brains together and roll up our sleeves and get going on what's the right technical agenda? Uh, how can we help uh, you know, reinvigorate this ecosystem of uh, uh, semiconductor innovation towards the goal of, again, you know, addressing the supply chain issue, bringing more and more manufacturing back to the U.S. Uh, as well as like-minded countries, and also creating a workforce that you need to support all of the things that we are talking about. So that's the idea here. Um, and the fact that the CHIPS Act is passed, you know, we are, we have created several work groups, work groups around uh, uh, technical agenda, work group around workforce development, uh, startups, uh, how do we treat IP. We are all working together so that uh, when when the government is ready, we can have a proposal which is based on uh, the, the, the collection of uh, a section of this industry. So that's the whole thing about CHIP uh, ASIC coalition. Yeah, so I, I want to double click on the last thing that you talked about, which was getting, um, I don't know if I call this advice uh, for uh, lawmakers as, as we go into this to get the best advantage uh, out of the chips, you know, kind of things to keep in mind. I mean, uh, we've seen uh, what Albany uh, in uh, partnership with the state of New York has been able to crank out. I wish we could teleport our audience out here because it is incredible uh, seeing the buildings, but I think more importantly, seeing the innovations that, um, uh, that have come out of this. Uh, in another conversation, we talked about uh, two nanometer, nanosheet, nanotubes. I mean, just incredible things that have come out uh, of, of here for, for decades. So what advice do you have for lawmakers uh, from here on forward? Thanks. Thanks that you brought up uh, Albany Nanotech. Albany Nanotech is a very, you know, it's a very unique and uh, I'll say the only such public-private partnership that exists uh, with uh, uh, you know, with more than $15 billion of investment on this site to build this incredible facility where, you know, where various uh, members uh, uh, between companies and uh, universities, they come together. Uh, it's, a, it's a template. It's a very successful template. Many companies have benefited from it. So, you know, we can leverage. One thing we can suggest is learn, you know, this is a model that has been working for the last 20 years. This model can be used as a template to scale at the national level because we understand the CHIPS Act is a national act and this could be a model that can be scaled, scaled beyond where we are. Second thing I will say is that uh, we don't have any time to waste in, in the CHIP race basically, right? So instead of thinking about, hey, you know, go build some facility, green field somewhere which could take five years, use some of these existing capability and the existing template that already you know is there help them grow help them scale so that the goal should be that as soon as uh, uh, you know the department is ready 
the implementation and execution can start in six months. And the ASIC coalition is ready, uh, considering the, 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 the infrastructure and the talent that ASIC coalition has, uh, the, the implementation of uh, the vision of NHTC can, can be done within six months from where we are right now. So leverage you know, the existing facilities and reinforce those facilities so that it can grow and serve the bigger purpose that the CHIPS Act uh, is calling for. I love that he mentioned that about the time horizon. I think in the, the market the is a lot conversations you and I have. We inform the press often, uh, you know, whether it's on broadcast or in. in, in that's been, been the question. Makesh has been, how long is this going to take to to be material? Like those automobiles that were sitting in fields that couldn't be completed. Yeah. This act is not going to single handedly change that scorecard. It's all about really planning out for the future. It's getting more resilient, building more strategic public-private partnerships, and also, of course, you know, maintaining those very important global partnerships that we have. This isn't a U.S. versus type of thing. This is a U.S. and the world type of opportunity. But it's it's a moment for yeah, us. Yeah, and can I pile on there absolutely, too? I absolutely. Mean, and these are my words. You know, a lot of people think about um, tax money coming in and it's going to go to waste and. What, what I've seen, I, I think this is a good example of it, and I think you're being very pragmatic, that if you have a system that works, that is a money maker and a job maker, not a, a, a money spend with, with really nothing long standing at the end, this is very different. Uh, and there is a model uh, that, that does work, and it seems to me that uh, it would make sense for um, us to double down and uh, invest as a, as a country. Thank you. That's exactly the way we see. And that's what we would like to advise that leverage this capability, leverage this public private partnership, help grow and, uh, you know, help meet the cause that we're all trying to do right now. Mukesh, it's been a lot of fun having you here. I think it's always great when serendipitous moments happen and we show up at the time when something like this is taking place. And then, of course, that you were so generous with your time to sit down with us. Hopefully everyone out there was able to digest all of this because if you're watching news and media, there's a lot here, and this is complicated. Like I said, we went from people really not even ever thinking about chips to it being at the dinner table to it becoming one of the most important pieces of legislation for our country. It's great to have you here, Mikesh, to help break it down for us. Pat, love going on the road. No, it's great. I just want to thank uh, all our viewers out there. Uh, and if you like the show, uh, please subscribe. And Dan and I are always available for feedback. But with that, uh, Dan and I are going to sign out. Uh, thank you so much, Makesh. Have a great day.